Hey tires, Darren here again with another fly tying tutorial. Today we're going to be tying the trailer trash, patterned by Ken Morish, which is based on the popular Intruder series. This fly offers a large profile with a very low bulk. As you can see, it has no weighted elements like eyes. Just a 40 millimeter fly tying shank, wire, and a hook. It has an easy to cast profile and it presents a ton of movement in the water, often eliciting violent strikes from the fish that you're after. Anglers can use this fly for steelhead, salmon, and sea run cutthroat and brown trout. Let's get started. <laughs> Alright, we're going to use a 40 millimeter prepared shank. I've prepared this up ahead of time. I'll leave a link in the description where you can find how to make these yourself. It's basically intruder wire, hook, and uh, an intruder shank. This one's a 40 millimeter. I'm just going to put my material clip down here just in case I. Uh, Sweep my fingers back. I don't want to get that hook embedded into my fingertips. So we're going to use a Danville. This is a 70 denier 6 aught thread. We'll start by tying on at the back here. Need a pair of scissors. And the first material we're going to tie on, I'm going to use a fluorescent pink opal standard Estaz. And for the Estaz, I'm just going to pull a couple of fibers off the core and we'll tie that in. And then I'm going to wrap it probably three or four times. Just like when I do most of my palmering on feathers and marabou, I just make sure to stroke back those fibers. Makes a denser ball for the next material to sit against. So I'll tie that mm -hmm. off. Next material, I'm just going to tie in a pink grizzly hackle. This is just a hackle that I took from the bottom of a dry fly cape. So the fibers on this are a little bit stiffer. So I'm just stripped away some fibers at the base. And I'm going to tie that in along the hook shank. We'll fold back that stem, make sure it's locked in tight. And I'm just going to run my scissors along the top side just to help get those fibers facing the right way. And then I'm going to stroke everything backwards as I wrap it. So you want to have fairly good hackle wrap here. So this is going to help the marabou, the next material that we put on, stand out. It's going to help it stand up against the uh, current in the water. Just trim that, save that piece for something else. So I'm going to wrap back over these fibers and I'm going to take it back to basically where I tied off the Estaz and it's going to really pop those materials out. Next, we're going to take a marabou plume. I'm going to take the some of the fibers off the bottom of the feather. And then I'm going to 
tease back some of the fibers from the tip of the feather. That's where I'm going to make my tie-in point. So I don't tie in right at the bare stem. I like to go back a little bit so we've got a few fibers trapped. Fold the feather back to lock it in. Trim that tip off. And then again, I'm going to take my scissors, run it along the top stem. That helps fold those feathers back when we wrap. I'm going to wrap that pretty much all the way. I've got material there for it. Okay, I'll catch that. And again, I'm going to tie this back into the marabou a little bit. That will give the fly a little bit more durability and that the, if the stem isn't as exposed. And it also pushes the marabou into the materials behind it. So you can see how that really wants to push out. All right. Next we're going to take a little bit of diamond braid. This is a flat diamond braid in silver. I'm going to take it up a little ways here. We just got to make sure we leave room for a second wing. If you want, you can put a little bit of super glue down along here just so that this really sticks. I'm going to omit that step here. So you just want to make sure that you wrap in touching turns and you want to try and flatten out that braid as you turn it. So just like when you're wrapping thread it can bunch up a little bit. You just want to kind of make sure that this stays as flat as possible. We'll catch that at the eye here. Trim it off. So again, we're going to use another bit of Estaz. This is the opal purple. We'll pull a few fibers off the core just to create a nice clean tie-in point. And let's do a few wraps. It's like two, three, four. And again, I'm pulling everything backwards as I tie it. Want to make sure you leave yourself a little bit of room so you can tie in the marabou and hackle. And take a purple grizzly in this case and just use whatever color, black or purple, just regular. Tie that in, bend back the stem to lock it in. Sure your threads out of the way when you're doing this. That looks pretty good. Let's put three or four wraps again. Probably could have given myself a little bit more room at the head here, but we're gonna make it work. Trim that, save it for another pattern. I'm going to add the purple plume and again prepare it the same way. So tie it in with the tip forward. Make sure that you trap down some of those fibers. Then pull the tip back. Make sure you lock it in. These are my 
showgirl colors, the pink and purple. What I refer to as showgirl, I guess. Again, we'll just push that down. Do a couple wraps. Lock that stem in. All right, and you can stop there if you want. I'm going to add a little bit of accent on this pattern. I've got just a little bit of purple and silver flashaboo, so we're going to tie a few strands in. We'll just tie those in along the side. And we'll wrap them under the hook here and over to the other side. Measure them out and trim off any excess. Clean up that head a touch. Now this last step again is completely optional. I'm just going to add a little bit of jungle cock. So what I do is match these feathers back to back, tip to tip, and then I just pull off where I think I want my length, just so that they're both exactly the same. I'll strip off fibers on both sides and we'll tie that in to the close side and the far side so we're going to take these stems adjust the position of the jungle cock nails and push them back to lock them in. You can just pull them and they should snap with a gentle tug. All right, and then we'll just clean up the head. Add a little whip finish. Make sure you got all those materials out of the way so you're not catching them in your in your whip finish. There we go. It's trailer trash.